Hi there, Sharon and Leah. Welcome, Gail. I'm glad you're here. If you would be so kind as to share, that would be awesome. Okay. I hope everybody's having a, a great Wednesday. Uh, we're halfway through the week, so um, hopefully it's a good week for you. Hi, Avis. Be sure to comment tonight um, because I am giving away a card afterwards. And I would love it very much if you would share. That helps me greatly to bring more people to my site and such. If you are with me for the first time, welcome. My name is Mary Nave. I'm from Westerville, Ohio. That's the Columbus, Ohio area. And I've been a demonstrator for 12 and a half years and I still um, love it. Actually, I love it even more than when I started. Uh, it just keeps getting better and better. Hi, Mary Lou and hi, Pam. Thanks so much for sharing, ladies. Just a quick reminder, um, that we are into the mini catalog. It is, um, you can find a, a, see a PDF on my stampinpeace.com blog, as well as on my online store, marynabe.stampinup.net. And please remember that we are also in Celebration. Celebration is Stampin' Up's biggest annual promotion. And we have special incentives for people who shop. You can get free items from this brochure with a $50 order and a $100 order. And um, wonderful choices, wonderful choices. I'm so happy about them. And then um, you can also, if you host an in-person Stampin' Up! Party or private class and your sales reach $300 or more, you can get this fabulous Punch Party stamp set free as a gift from Stampin' Up! And then lastly, if you join with our wonderful starter kit promotion, which is always good, choose $125 a product and you get, and you pay just $99 plus tax and you get the starter kit shipped free. So huge savings there with the free shipping and the total product you get for the $99 plus tax, you're saving $38.50. But right now through February 28th, Stampin' Up! is sweetening the deal by giving you five packs of six by six designer series paper. You're gonna get the brights, the neutrals, the regals, the subtles, and the 2020 to 2022 in color packs. So a great assortment of colors and patterns and all of this is worth $57.50 and you get that free. So the $57.50 plus a $38.50 savings, $125 more of product and you pay just $99 plus tax. So it's a great time if you're looking to start a business or earn a little extra income, if you just want a discount on all of your Stampin' Up! purchases, you can purchase the starter kit for that reason. Um, the value doesn't get any better than it does during celebration. So I would encourage you to join if you are purchasing from me on a frequent basis, or perhaps if you're a beginner who wants to build up um, your supplies of stamping and paper crafting products now is a great time because you get so much for your money when you purchase the starter kit. Yesterday, I launched my first class to go of 2021, a little bit later than I wanted to, but you know, that's life. I've got a big creative escape weekend happening um, this Friday through Monday. So I've been working hard getting that all ready. I actually um, started packing things up today. So that feels good to be about a day ahead. <laughs> okay, but my class is the many messages to go. The class costs $64. 
you get the Many Messages Bundle, which is valued at $50. You are getting a full pack of the Oso oh Ombre Designer Series paper. You are going to get some Baker's Twine, a full bolt of the Baker's Twine, and I'm going to give you four half sheets of cardstock so that you can stamp and die cut the many messages in four different colors of ink that coordinate with the DSP. And then, so you get all this product, and then you get um, supplies, card bases, and envelopes to make these cards. You're gonna get supplies for eight cards, two of each of these designs. So they're just bright and fun and cheerful. And of course, with the many messages, stamp set and die, you can put just about any greeting on these. You can mix and match the sentiments to your cards and your needs and your reasons for sending. So all that for $64. And the deadline to sign up for that class to go is Tuesday, January 19th. I give you one week, Tuesday, January 19th. All kits will be mailed by January 30th, along with all of that product you get. Okay, I'm sure you're ready for a demonstration tonight on, if I can get this opened... My fingers, I'm having a little trouble with my hands and wrists lately. But it doesn't stop me from stamping and crafting. So if you were with me on my Stamp and Peace VIP group on Monday at 11 a.m., I showed you how to make a Joyfold card. And I made this featuring the Hydrangea Hill Suite. And tonight we're going to be using more products from the Hydrangea Hill Suite. Um, we really focused on the Designer Series paper on Monday, okay? Tonight, we're going to have a little bit different focus, and we're actually going to be using the um, Designer Acetate that is part of this product suite. It comes in four sheets, two colors, and then two designs. This one's a little more kind of like bubbles, and this is a little more splotchy, okay? And they come in 12 by 12 sheets. But a lot of times we see something, a product like this, and it's sort of intriguing, but at the same time, it's intimidating. And I used to really shy away from products like this, thinking I just really don't know what to do with them. So I started jumping outside of my box, my comfort zone, and playing with it a little bit. And I have come up with some cards that I think you will enjoy um, making, hopefully as much as I have made, enjoyed making them and will enjoy showing them to you. I'll also be featuring the Hydrangea Haven stamp set. It does have coordinating dies. I'm not using the dies today. And that will be another day's project but it's wonderful and I love all the positive sentiments in the stamp set. And of course, we'll add some bling with the pastel pearls and this gorgeous grape sheer ribbon. So let's get started. I'm showing you three cards tonight. Two are pretty simple. This one's very simple, but because I'm showing you three cards, I did go ahead and um, cut and die cut um, pretty much everything for tonight. So for this one, I'm just starting with a basic white card base, five and a half by eight and a half inches, and then scored at four and a quarter. I should get my other bone folder. That's the one I um, use for my, for refilling my ink pads. All right, I'm just going to, and I have found that the stamp and seal or the snail, the rolling adhesive works really well um, 
with the designer acetate. You can also use dimensionals. When I adhere this, if you're not using something clear like the Stampin' Seal or, or uh, the Snail, I'm still using up my supply of Snail, even though it's retired. <clears throat> I like to try to hide um, the adhesive. And we'll talk about that more in, as we go on. For this one, it really doesn't matter so much. Okay, I've cut a banner strip, one inch by three and three quarters. And I'm stamping this wonderful sentiment. The world is better because of you. I could send this to each one of you, couldn't I? Because the world really is better with people like you, with us crafters always looking to share our creativity and share kindness by sending cards. And then I'm just with dimensionals adding that to my card front super simple I'll add a bow I love the sheer ribbon sheer ribbon is probably my favorite kind of ribbon I like the width I like the weight it's super easy to work with um, you can make a nice size bow and the knot of the bow doesn't end up too bulky. You know, on some cards, in fact, I made one last week and I put that um, Rococo Rose scallop linen bow on it and the, it's really bulky. Um, and I thought, oh, that's not really one I'll be sending through the mail. That's one I would more, more or less give to somebody. I'll stick that bow right there. I'll leave these ends kind of long. Oh, Leah, I'm happy to see that you got your catalog today. People are just starting to let me know this week that they're getting their catalogs. I know they're late. Stampin' Up! knows they're late, um, but we were kind of at the mercy of the Postal Service this year. So there you go. Super easy, quick card with a nice message. Great to send to so many people. Okay, so there's card one. All right. Um, for card two, I'm using all basic white card bases tonight. And they're all cut five and a half by eight and a half. And then you score it four and quarter and fold in half. Then for this one, I've cut a piece of let me think what color is this Highland Heather cardstock and I cut this five and three eighths by four and one eighth. Oh Joyce, you got yours too. Wonderful. I also emboss it and uh, embossed it with the tasteful textile embossing folder. And I need to tell you about what happened because I know better, but I was hurrying. I was busy just doing so many things today and I was hurrying and wasn't thinking. I had some, um, I wanted to emboss some white cardstock here and you can see it didn't come out very well. So I'm embossing, I roll it through my machine and I hear a crack. And as soon as I heard it, I knew exactly what I did. When you are using embossing folders, always, always, always put the folded end in first. I was hurrying, not paying attention, and I sent it through with the open end first, and this is the result. It actually breaks your embossing folder, okay? And I thought, I've never had that happen because I know better, <laughs> but I thought, oh well, I will just go ahead and emboss anyways, and I'll look to purchase a new one later. Well, I put my cardstock in, turned it around, fold in first. Now again, it's broken. But look, it that fold is so important because it did not emboss thoroughly because this no longer um, is holding in place like it should. So a word... Uh, a lesson based on my experience, my mistake, always put your embossing folders in 
fold first, okay? I need to save that, make a quick tip Tuesday video with that because I'm, I'm sure if I did it, somebody else um, might be inclined to do that too. And there's no need for us to be replacing things like that if we have follow that simple tip. Okay, so this one is embossed. And that was before I broke my embossing folder. Now I'm just using some of these pieces of acetate as, um, again, like accents, but I'm adding a little bit more to it. And I really want them to stand out and pop. So I am going to adhere each of these strips. These are one inch by three inch strips of acetate. And you can see right there, I have some adhesive on a splotch there. Let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, I don't know if that's any better. I can flip it around because we'll cover it up. And then I'm adhering each of these. I'm gonna try and put my adhesive where there's mostly silver. Oh, by the way, that's another thing about these. They come in two colors, but the reverse side is um, like a silver gray, lighter and darker. The one isn't, I wouldn't say it's white, but a light gray and a dark gray or light silver and dark silver. So they're real versatile that way. You could use the opposite side. The white cardstock measures three and an eighth by one and one eighth. Okay, the acetate is three by one, and then the cardstock is three and an eighth by one and an eighth. I just wanted a tiny little border here. And then these will go on here. I'm going to adhere these with dimensionals. Now, any place that I'm using the acetate, um, glue dots would work well too, Cindy. Yes, glue dots would work very well with the acetate. No problem at all. And they're small, um, so they're easily hidden. Good question. Hi, Cecilia. Oh, Joyce, you got your catalog too today. Well, good. I'll move my center one over. Noticed I, I've used my stamp and dimensionals, but I'm not pressing down really hard until I have these in place and spaced to my liking. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, then I've cut a piece of <clears throat> Whisper White cardstock, and this measures uh, one inch by three and three quarters, I believe. Yes. And, oops, I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna use this punch. I love these different banner punches. So fun. I've got a theme going here, so I'm just going to keep on um, I guess I'll use this one. This is gorgeous grape. Highland Heather is also a good choice. Okay. And I'll now add this banner. Actually, I'm going to add this with the regular adhesive since I already have dimensionals on there. Now here you can see I got some um, I can see my adhesive a little bit through there. Can you see that right here and here? Okay. I'm able to cover that up with my banner. 
And I think we'll add a little bling. How about some of these fun pearls? Just going to put one on each end of my banner like that. And I think that's pretty quick and easy, okay? Keep in mind that wherever we are putting the um, designer acetate, you could do the very same thing with the designer series paper. But I just think it's, it's fun to, and interesting and kind of a wow factor to use something like this um, designer acetate. It's just very different than what people are used to seeing. Okay, so there's another easy card, few more steps, more layers, but still very easy. And then finally, on this one, we're gonna do some more stamping. We're actually going to stamp the hydrangea. Again, a basic white. Um, card base. This time my card's going to be vertical. This time I'm using the acetate for a background. Okay, It's not going to be the focal point, but it's going to create a really interesting background. I'm going to be stamping on this piece of cardstock and it will be centered on the card. So for this, I'm going to put plenty of adhesive on, but I'm keeping my adhesive right in the center so that all of that will be covered up. There won't be any chance of being able to see that on my finished card because the adhesive is in the center and the parts that are showing, like here and here, will be hidden by the cardstock I'm going to be stamping on. Okay. So um, I believe that was last Wednesday. I showed you two ways of adding color, more than one color to a single stamp. Um, I'm doing something similar today in the fact that I'm adding two colors to this stamp, but I'm doing it very differently. This, I would not suggest this technique um, for rubber stamps, red, the red rubber stamps, but you can handle this technique um, because of the layout of the stamp. I want one color at the top of the stamp and one color at the bottom, and it's photopolymer, so I can see exactly where that ink is going. So I'm just gonna roll it in my, gonna set it there and roll it around a little bit in my, um, gorgeous grape ink and then I'm going to follow that up doing the same thing with the leaves and stem in my mossy meadow ink. You could also add the ink to this with your stamp and write markers or sponge daubers as well but this is an out basically an outline stamp. I'm gonna huff on it Breathing heavily on it kind of re-moistens that ink <sighs> because the ink that I started with first um, might be dry by the time I'm ready to stamp on my cardstock. And that turns out just like that. Now my stamp scooted a little bit, but that's okay because now I'm going to fill in some color. So I'll let you know that I used Gorgeous Grape and Mossy Meadow. Now I'm going to use Highland Heather and Old Olive because I want a um, little bit lighter shades of the purple and green. So I started with Gorgeous Grape and Mossy Meadow and now I'm going to use Highland Heather. And ink everywhere. 
And for the leaves, to fill in the leaves and stem, I'm using Old Olive. Now this is pretty easy to match up. Number one, because they're photopolymer stamps. But the other thing is these um, solid fill-in stamps are a little bit larger than the outlines of the flowers and the stems. So you get a little leeway. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I think that turned out just fine. I'm now going to add this to my card front because this is my focal point. That was sort of a, a cheater way of stamping the outline of the flower, the hydrangea, and the stems and leaves. Okay, pretty just like that, isn't it? But we can't stop there, not when we have gorgeous ribbon. And this is the card I'll be giving away. So be sure to comment. If you are not currently working with the Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. And I'd be happy to start doing that by sending you complimentary catalogs if you need them. All you have to do is message me or email me and include your full name, mailing address, and email. And I will get those off in the mail to you. For my glue dots, here we go. One glue dot on the back of your, the knot of your bow is just perfect for adhering. All right, I think we should add a sentiment to the inside. I pulled out this one earlier and used it. You make me smile. And I'm going to use my gorgeous grape for that. There you go. So now I've shown you four card layouts each using the designer acetate in a different way. What do you think? What do you think? I hope you like them, um, super pretty. Love the last card the best, I do too. But all of them, I love all of them. And I guess because sometimes we need something quick and fast. Somebody's having a bad day or um, you're just somebody's on your mind and you want to shoot off a quick card. All of these would work for those purposes. Joan, you love the designer acetate. Yes, it's something, just something different to work with. Um, something, you know, we don't see every day in our paper crafting. Uh, let me show you a couple other cards. These were with the darker color of the acetate. So on this one, I just paired it with the um, Gorgeous Grape ink and the Gorgeous Grape ribbon. But on this one, I changed it up and I used Rococo Rose cardstock and ink. And I think it works with Rococo Rose too. Um, I think it could go either way. Even Blackberry Bliss. I was wondering how this would look with Blackberry Bliss as well. Let me pull that out and see. Yeah, I think that could work with Blackberry Bliss as well. So just something fun, something unique. Um, and I just had fun creating with the designer acetate and wanted to give you some ideas of how you can use the acetate 
as well in your card making and paper crafting. I hope you enjoyed this evening's demonstration. Um, if you need any help at all with Stampin' Up! products, ordering, um, questions, techniques, whatever, I am happy to help you at any time. Um, please just contact me. You can send me a uh, message through Facebook Messenger. I don't always see those as quickly. Um, but I hope you will like this Facebook page, not just the post, but actually like the page and get notifications of when I am live. Every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m., I am right here on this business page, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. On Mondays and Fridays, I do Facebook Lives on my VIP group, and you can go to Stampin' Peace VIP group and request to join that if you're not already in there. All right, have a great time. Um, if I can help you with celebration, ordering, um, putting together a virtual party for you, or a small in-person class, I'd be happy to do that. And of course, I would love to add more people to my Mary Stampers team. And I can say as of today, what uh, we started, what, a week ago, eight days ago with Celebration. And so far I have added four people to my team. They all took advantage of the wonderful starter kit promotion with the extra five packs of designer series paper. And so I am happy to have, let me see if I remember all their names, Julie, Beth, Sylvia and Claudia have all joined my team. So I'm excited to work with them and help them enjoy their demonstrator discount as well as um, membership in our uh, Mary Stampers team. Have a great Wednesday evening and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.